Continuing our WiiWare retrospective, this time we're going through 2009 and the 24 notable games you should really check out before the service goes down. Hey everyone, Mike again from LWT. We have got a ton of games to go through this time, so let's jump right into our WiiWare Retrospective Part 2 covering 2009. The first notable game and one of my favorites, Lit, which is a horror-themed puzzle game by Way Forward. This is a top-down game in which the player explores his high school looking for his lost girlfriend. The player must navigate through a number of dark rooms by lighting them up using various techniques like opening windows, turning on TVs, basically you're just creating a light path through the room because if you step into the darkness you lose the stage. Following that we get Onslaught which is a sci-fi first person shooter by Hudson Soft. The player investigates a research colony that's been taken over by robotic insects. The game has 13 stages and a competitive multiplayer mode. Next up is Gradius Rebirth, the first of Konami's Rebirth game is a new 16-bit style Gradius title. The game features the same gameplay and power-up system that the series is known for, and features a number of stages created by remixing stages from other Gradius games. The game features two modes, a standard mode with unlimited continues, and a single life score attack mode. This is definitely a game worth checking out for Konami fans, for Gradius fans, it's a ton of fun. Hudson Soft bring back another classic title next, Adventure Island The Beginning. This is kind of a prequel to the original NES uh, Adventure Island and it's very reminiscent in both design and gameplay to that original NES game, but the style has been updated to 2.5D graphics. The main mode is a stage based platformer similar to the original Adventure Island with similar weapons and the skateboard power up. The game also includes four mini games like skateboarding, axe throwing, and more. Definitely worth checking out for fans of Adventure Island or, you know, old Wonder Boy titles. Following that is Crystal Defenders R1. Now this is a Final Fantasy themed tower defense game that has you summoning different classes of characters and placing them on a path to attack approaching monsters who are trying to take your crystals. There's a ton of classes and stages in here. Various versions of the games were released on other platforms and mobile devices, but WiiWare is the only release of this kind of tweaked R1 version. Another throwback to the NES, Excite Bike World Rally is a 2.5D follow-up to the original NES Excite Bike that tries to recapture that experience. The gameplay is very similar to the original game, but offers different camera angles. World Rally features courses inspired by London, America, Japan, and Mexico, and there's a track editor just like the original so you can build your own courses. Following up on Crystal Defenders, we get Crystal Defenders R2. Now this is a follow-up that adds in all the classes from the mobile game that weren't in the original and ramps up the difficulty, so this is kind of like expert mode if you've done that original game. Hudson with another throwback, Bubble Bobble Plus is a remake of the original arcade NES Bubble Bobble game with similar stages but new updated graphics and controls. The game was released first as Bubble Bobble Plus on WiiWare, but later in the year another remake was released on Xbox Live as Bubble Bobble Neo. It's essentially the same game with better graphics and controls, so you can probably skip out on this one and play it on Xbox, it's just neat knowing it came out here first. Another one of my favorites, Final Fantasy for the After Years. This is a complete follow-up to the SNES RPG Final Fantasy 2 or 4 depending on the release. Uh, it was originally released on Japanese mobile phones and the updated version released on WiiWare is the first English release of the game with better graphics. The game shows what's happened to the characters years after the original game. The original download was pretty cheap and has the player go through the story of Cecil and Rosa's son. It's about a two hour game but if you've got it, you should also make sure you have all the DLC. There are eight pieces of DLC for a couple dollars each, seven of which can be played through in any order before the game's finale, which is the last piece of DLC. Basically, the game is split up into characters, and each piece of DLC covers one character, and they all come together at the end. It's a really neat structure for an RPG. This game was eventually bundled with an updated version of the original Final Fantasy IV for PSP, and there was a complete 3D remake for iOS and Android. So there are other ways to play this game, but I feel like the WiiWare version is pretty unique and definitely worth checking out in its own right. Following up on that Bubble Bobble Plus is Rainbow Island's Towering Adventure. So this is a update to the kind of semi-sequel to Bubble Bobble Rainbow Islands. In this new entry, Bub and Bob attempt to climb a giant tower where their wish will be granted at the top. Gameplay is consistent with previous games in the series, with the player laying down rainbows as platforms to keep moving upwards and defeating enemies. The game features co-op, tons of stages and boss fights. Hudson's second attempt at a first person shooter, Water Warfare is a water gun based first person shooter that was hilariously named Bang Bang Kids in Japan. The game has several water weapons including water machine guns, sniper rifles and rocket launchers that are refilled at water fountains. 
There are eight maps, a split screen two player mode, and a number of eight player multiplayer modes. There's also a 38 stage single player mode with bots, so just a ton in here for this kind of game. Hudson going with another follow up to the Bubble Bobble series. Bust a Move Plus is a version of Bust a Move with 135 single player levels and a two player battle mode. The game also has two DLC packs which each have another 135 stages. So just a ton of stages, some of them from the previous games, worth checking out for Bust a Move fans. A strange follow up to My Life as a King? The Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles My Life as a Dark Lord is a completely different game from the previous title. My Life as a Dark Lord is a tower defense game with literal towers. The game has the player controlling the Dark Lord's daughter Mira, who is a really cool character design, and she builds a tower full of traps and monsters that the heroes try to scale. On each floor, heroes take damage from traps and monsters that you lay down, and the goal is to balance your defenses to keep them from reaching the top. There's a ton of stages here, definitely a cool game, I highly recommend it. Following that we get Nick's Quest Kindred Spirits. This is a 2.5D puzzle platformer in which the player controls Icarus and Nyx in ancient Greece. The player can use special abilities to manipulate the environment similar to games like Lost Winds or Lost in Shadows. The game features a two-player co-op mode as well where one player controls Nyx doing the platforming and the other uses the special abilities to change up the environment. Another throwback to an older series, Mr. Driller W is an all-new game in the Mr. Driller block drilling puzzle series which features a tutorial to help new players learn the gameplay, over 20 stages, and a number of difficulties for both novice and pro players. Next up is the second game in Konami's Rebirth series, Contra Rebirth is a new 16-bit style Contra most similar to the SNES and Genesis games. Contra Rebirth can be played single player or co-op and starts with two character choices, but two additional characters can be unlocked. The game features three difficulties, five stages, and three different weapon power-ups. This is a must-play for Contra fans, especially if you're a fan of Contra 3 Alien Wars. It's a great follow-up, definitely worth checking out. Another update after that, Arknoid Plus, which is an update of the original Arknoid arcade game. It features the classic visual look and gameplay with new modes. The game itself isn't so much as an update as the previous arcade updates we've talked about here, but the arcade mode does feature 61 stages with bosses and a new mode including a two-player versus mode and time attack mode. Next up is the follow-up to Lost Winds, Winter of Melodias. The second game in the Lost Winds series adds a really interesting new mechanic to the unique gameplay from the original title, which is the ability to change between seasons from winter to summer in order to solve more intricate puzzles. The game features a bigger, more open world and a map screen to keep players from getting lost. The game also features two playable characters, including the protagonist from the original game. Just a nice follow-up to the original, everything is a bit better here, definitely worth checking out if you checked out the original. The last Konami Rebirth game and my favorite, Castlevania The Adventure Rebirth. This is a remake of the original Castlevania Adventure for Game Boy and it turns the game into a 16-bit style Castlevania with completely different levels that feature multiple paths and much smoother gameplay. Honestly, the original Castlevania Adventure was a decent game for the time but really needed an upgrade and this is a great one. The game retells the story of Christopher Belmont's fight against Dracula. It features six stages and adds sub-weapons that weren't in the original. The original mechanic of shooting a fireball from a fully powered up whip is still in the game. Fans of Castlevania really need to check out this title. Following that, Konami puts out Frogger Returns. Now this is an update to the original arcade Frogger, but it includes 3D graphics while retaining that classic top-down gameplay. The game features four levels including some new stages. You can play through the city, subway, sewers, and swamp, each with unique enemies. New power-ups also let the player stop in reverse time as well as become invincible. There's also a one-on-one -on -one local multiplayer race mode, and the game was released later on PS3 shortly after its Wii release, so not totally exclusive, but definitely worth checking out. Pokemon Rumble is next, which is the first game in the Pokemon Rumble series. A lot of people don't know that was a WiiWare release. This introduced toy Pokemon collecting and battling gameplay in a top-down action-like game. The game supports up to four players simultaneously in co-op and competitive modes, but the main mode is just to battle through stages and collect Pokemon that you can use to play through other stages. Another spin-off to one of our favorite series, Harvest Moon My Little Shop. This game still has the farming and animal raising that Harvest Moon is known for, but it's all scaled back so it can focus more on the main point of the game, which is selling products at your shop. The game takes place in the new Clover Town, and the residents have fallen on hard times with the Harvest Sprite's power gone, so it's your job to try and restore the town. The game features a number of mini-games, all related to selling items like serving ice cream, decorating eggs, and more to kind of add to that gameplay experience. Uh, definitely worth checking out for fans of Harvest Moon. 
Next up is Moki Moki, which is a puzzle game published by Natsumi where you rotate and manipulate the environment in order to help guide a series of Moki creatures through the deadly stages and try to get as many as possible to the end. In that way, it's something similar to Loco Roco or Lemmings. Definitely worth checking out if you're into those kinds of games. The last game for the year on December 28th, 2009 is Rabbit's Lab, which is a strange tech demo-like experience that has the player interacting with a rabbit from the Rayman series who's trapped inside your Wiimote. On the screen, you can see the inside of your Wiimote with the rabbit and moving the Wiimote or pressing buttons interacts with it in different crazy ways. You can also bring in items to mess with him and change up his appearance, but there's not too much to do here. That's it for 2009, we still have about 19 games left to get to, so stay tuned for the later episodes, which will be up shortly after this one, and I'll see you guys next time.